All right, ladies and gentlemen, the last little bit to get you started um, to create some of your own recursive solutions is ask yourself at the beginning, what's the base case? Is there one loop of this problem that's small enough to solve easily? Is there a way to reduce this string so that it is the simplest version and the answer is obvious? Is there a way to reduce the list? Is there a calculated value that is the smallest version of this problem? If you can identify that, you've got your base case. Then you can work on the recursive case. And this is where you're looking for the, rep the repetitiveness of your solution. What is it that you're reducing over and over again, repetitively, the same steps, so that you can create a smaller subset of that problem? In an example of a list, I would often um, encourage you to think about how do I reduce the size of that list? This particular example is reducing the size of the list um, from the first index all the way to the end. Um, I could maybe even reduce it from the third index all the way to the end. And that means that before it, I have a few values of the list that I've probably done some other calculation with. The same with the string. Um, how do I reduce the string? In this particular example, I'm taking the string and cutting off the last um, value at the end of the string and saying, hey, let's rerun this function with everything from the beginning of the string to the last value. And again, I can change that. Maybe I want to take off the last two values. Maybe I want to take off the last three values. It really depends on the problem. So the last thing to look at here is an example of where we have an iterative approach. This is doing something counting one by one to solve some larger problem. We're doing a power. Uh, so I think the, um, the idea here is that we're taking some value like 3, raising it to the power of 5. So it's a to the power of b. And that we want to run a for loop. So that means it is iterative. Okay, and within that loop, we're counting all the way up to five and just continually multiplying a on top of it. In the example where we'd want to make this recursive, we want to think about what's the lowest version of that problem. So it helps if I can visualize and think about that five or three, excuse me, three to the power of five is the same as saying three times three to the power of four which is the same as saying 3 times 3 to the power of 3, which is the same as saying 3 times the power of 2. How do you figure this stuff out? You just have to play with your numbers a little bit, and I have not picked examples that are so ridiculously math hard um, that you, you can't work this out within a reasonable amount of time. So my base case is when I hit um, that B is 1, and then that means that I just want to multiply one last, um, uh, what do you call it? I guess the base value, in this case the value of A, to it. Otherwise, I want to do my recursive statement. So remember that recursive statement has to have in there that I'm going to call my function recursively. I want to call it with a smaller version of the problem. So I'm identifying here, this was my smaller version of the problem. So that's what this number is here. There we go. Um, but that alone is not what makes this recursive. We also need to take the result of what's happening in this um, recursive call and it needs to influence the larger version of the program. So in this case it also then needs to multiply by something and we notice that we are repetitively taking that base value A and, repeat, and repeatedly multiplying it by the smaller version of the problem. So that's my last little part in there that makes that recursive. Um, I look forward to your questions to come in this week, um, and I'll do a Q&A video, hopefully this week if I get any questions um, to cover for everybody. Thanks very much, everyone. Best wishes.